everyone, what's going on? This video is all about the MMT. Yup, you guessed it, masculine man test. So, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel really sad. Like, why do I always have to open up the car door for her? Always get her flowers for her birthday for special occasions? <laughs> That's a 0 out of 5 on the MMT test. Not masculine. Haha, <laughs> psych! MMT stands for Manual Muscle Testing. Y'all knew that! Not masculine man test, come on now. <laughs> this video is going to be all about the purpose of an MMT, the grades of an MMT, and how to use an MMT for your physical therapy exam. Lego! Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, my name is Justin Lee, doctor, physical therapy student, and fitness coach. Here you'll find videos on fitness, physical therapy, and lifestyle that helps inspire self-change. I truly believe that lifting not only weights, but also each other can encourage excellence and empower greatness. So whatever journey that you're in, I support you and I'm here to lift you up. Change people, change people. That's why we live for change people. If any of this resonates with you, feel free to subscribe and hit those notifications. All right, let's get into this. I'm gonna be using the Physio U apps to help me out here. And again, in the description, there's gonna be video links for you and timestamps. So make sure you check that out there. Okay, so the purpose of an MMT, like why are we doing it in the first place? First off, an MMT stands for Manual Muscle Testing, and this is used to objectively measure the muscle strength of a specific muscle for somebody. So a physical therapist will go and say, hmm, I think that the biceps or their elbow flexion is kind of weak. Let me go in and check the actual strength of that. So you'll perform an MMT on that bicep muscle and grade it on a scale of zero to five and then see if it's really strong or not really strong or really weak. So we're gonna get into the grades here in just a little bit. Now, weakness is a huge component of the physical therapy exam. Many times people get injured or people have certain diagnoses because of weakness. So for example, if someone has a hamstring strain, they likely got that strain because the hamstring is weak. Or maybe synergistic muscles like the glutes, which are both hamstrings and glutes are both hip extensors, maybe those are weak, which cause the hamstring to overwork, right? Which also means it's weak. So an MMT is really important because it objectively measures how weak or strong a muscle is. And then you can have that baseline information and then you can use that information to then test later and say, hey, they were at a three out of five when we started and now they're at a four plus out of five. Okay, so let's move on to how to grade a manual muscle test. No, it's not like getting an A, B, or C. Oh, I wanted to get the A plus. Chill, Asian Justin. You ain't coming back here today. All right, so a manual muscle test grade goes from zero to five. Zero means there's no activity at all. You try putting your hand and palpate that muscle and you tell them to uh, contract and you don't feel anything. So zero is super, super weak. And then there's five, meaning they're super strong. You're applying some pressures and they are not breaking at all. Zero, very weak five, very strong. Now on this scale, there are pluses and minuses. So it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five, but then now there's one plus, two minus, two, two plus, three minus, and so on and so forth. And we're gonna go over that here in just a little bit. But you have to know, I call this the checkpoint because three out of five means that you're going with gravity, you're going against gravity, and then three minus or less means gravity is eliminated, okay? So what does that mean? We are going against forces of gravity, right? It's keeping me down. I have to use extra energy to go through that gravity, right? So if it's a three or greater, that means I could at least move through gravity. If it's three minus or less, that means I have to eliminate gravity and I have to test that way. Now, when you eliminate gravity, that means you have to work in the horizontal plane. And here are some examples of that. But the patient's sitting, we're now able to test for shoulder flexion. 
looking at primarily anterior deltoid muscle strength. I would stabilize the patient over the superior border of the scapula and instruct the patient with the thumb up to raise their arm all the way overhead and down in that position. That would allow me to look at full range of motion. Having looked at full range, palpated anterior deltoid, I can then instruct the patient to hold at 90 degrees as we're going to apply our resistance at the distal humerus. In this position, stabilizing here, I move the hand from palpation down to the distal humerus, apply force, the patient does not break at all, and that would be considered a grade five. Palpating once again, having the patient come up, hold the patient's arm in the test position, coming down, and I feel a slight break in that resistance. The patient can resist against my force, but is unable to hold that position. That would be considered a grade four. Patient, once again, can go through full range of motion, apply my stability, palpated anterior deltoid, apply my resistance here, and immediately the patient breaks. The patient can get through full range of motion actively, but cannot hold any type of resistance against my force and loses that position completely. That would be considered a grade three manual muscle test. With the patient in sideline position, I can now look at gravity minimized testing for shoulder flexion. In this position, you can have a table if you have the ability to do that, to have the arm slide as we do many of the other tests, but it is uh, very appropriate just to hold the arm. The key factor here is that I have to allow the patient to perform the activity. All I am providing as the tester is the ability to hold or take the weight off of the arm. So in this position, I would palpate the anterior deltoid, ask the patient to actively flex and move their arm forward. As I hold her arm, she's moving it forward. And in that position, I would grade that as a grade two for gravity minimized flexion of the shoulder. Instruct the patient once again, holding the arm and supporting it, palpating here. Instruct the patient to flex forward. I feel no motion whatsoever. The patient's unable to move forward, but I do feel a contraction in the anterior deltoid. That would be considered a grade one. So with this one, you saw that there was with gravity, right? They're going up and down. And then with the other one, you notice that they're moving in the horizontal plane. So that's what I mean by with gravity and gravity eliminated. All right, so let's go through these grades. So a zero, like I mentioned, means there is no palpable muscle contraction. A grade of a one can also mean trace, and that means there is a palpable muscle contraction. Two minus, also known as poor minus, able to go through partial range of motion, gravity eliminated. A two is a poor, able to go through full range of motion in a gravity eliminated position. A two plus is called a poor plus. It moves through partial range of motion against gravity or moves through complete range of motion in the gravity eliminated and you can hold against some pressures. A three minus is a fair minus, means a gradual release from testing position, but there is still no gravity, still cannot move through the full, uh, full motion through gravity. When they have a three, that means they're fair. They're able to go through a full range of motion against gravity, but they are unable to hold against any minimal resistance. A three plus is a fair plus, that means they hold that testing position against minimal resistance. A four minus is a good minus, able to hold against minimal to moderate resistance. A four is a good, able to hold against moderate resistance. A four plus is a good plus, able to hold against moderate to maximal resistance. And a five is normal, able to hold against maximal resistance. <sighs> so now we have to go through how to perform an MMT. I broke this up into six different steps. Now you will just do these steps for every single muscle group that you want to test. Number one, the therapist has to be in a specific position. Number two, the patient has to be in a specific position. Number three, you have to palpate the muscle as the patient goes through the full range of motion. Now this tells you two things. 
One, it tells you that the muscle is working, so at least you can grade it not as zero, right? That there is some kind of contraction. And then two, it gives you what their full range of motion and to see if it's in with gravity or gravity eliminated. Number four, you have to set the muscle to its testing position. Number five, you have to stabilize the proximal joint. And then number six, this is where you apply the force, but make sure you do it gradually, not just ooh, push down, right? Let me see that again. Ooh. <laughs> you have to apply a gradual force to slowly go, 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 right? And then uh, see what the grade is. Now, this is one of the bigger reasons why knowing your anatomy, your origin, insertion, and actions are super important and memorizing that because these MMT tests are basically knowing all of that information and then just applying it. Okay. There are many, many, many MMT tests for so many different muscles, but I'm just gonna cover the key ones for the upper and lower extremity. First, we're gonna cover shoulder flexion, and this tests the anterior deltoid and the coracobrachialis. Down to the distal humerus, apply force, the patient does not break at all. External rotation, this is going to test the infraspinatus and the teres minor. Applied just proximal to the wrist, but straight down to the floor, and I may need to position my body a little bit more directly in this manner. I would push straight down to the floor, and in that position, the patient can hold that without any breaking. That would be a grade five. Elbow flexion. This is going to test the biceps brachii, brachialis, and brachioradialis. Come off 20 to 30 degrees, and my resistance will be pulling back towards myself, just proximal to the wrist. It would look like this, a weight shift away. In that position, I get no break from that angle, and that would be a grade five. Elbow extension. This is going to test the triceps brachii muscle. The ulna straight down to the table. So it's going to be just down like that. So holding the patient here, stabilizing here, hold that position, and my force is going straight down to the table. Patient does not break. That would be a five out of five for elbow extension or tricep strength. And the last muscle we're gonna be looking at for the upper extremity is going to be looking at scapular adduction and depression, and this is looking at the lower trapezius muscle. Once the patient has maintained that position, I can then move to resistance over the lateral border of the scapula, performing abduction and elevation and a resistance to that muscle. The patient can hold that position without breaking. That would be a grade five. All right, let's move on to the lower extremity. Hip abduction, which is going to be looking at the glute medius and glute minimus muscle. Greater trochanter, holding in that position, my resistance will be on the lateral portion, just proximal to the knee. I'm gonna go straight down to the table. Holding that position would be a grade five. Hip extension, this is going to be looking at the gluteus maximus and the hamstring muscles. Stability at the pelvis, and I'm going to push straight down to the table. Patient can hold that position, and that would be considered a grade five. Knee extension, this is going to be looking at the quadriceps muscles. The knee 10 to 20 degrees, to eliminate the lockout mechanism. In this position, I ask the patient to go ahead and hold that position, stabilize at the pelvis, and I'm going to go just proximal to the ankle, pushing straight down to the floor, and I can actually lower my body weight right into that. I can be very aggressive with this test. The patient didn't break, and that would be considered a five out of five muscle test for the quadriceps. Next, we're moving down to the ankle. We're going to look at dorsiflexion, which is going to be looking at the anterior tibialis muscle. I'm going to stabilize now behind the Achilles, and my force, as the patient is holding their foot up and in, my force will be down and out, and it will be just a weight shift down into this position, and the patient can hold that position. It should be a very, very strong muscle. A five out of five should be the grade there without any movement. Okay, guys, just know that I only went through a few MMT tests for you guys. Now, there are so many more, so many more that you're gonna have to learn in PT school. And yeah, it is a lot. 
but I just went through the key ones that I thought that were the most important and the ones that you'll see the most and just those big muscle groups, but you'll definitely, definitely be learning a lot more specific muscles when you get into DPT school. And that's why I think this Physio U app is super convenient because it literally has a video and all the directions for every single one of those MMT tests. Again, you guys, in the description, I'm gonna be putting the timestamps, the MMT tests of which specific muscle we're testing and the video links as well. If you guys got value from this video, please feel free to share this amongst your friends or post this on any kind of student network like the Doctor of Student Network. And if you like this video, give this a thumbs up. Feel free to comment if you have any questions. And once again, please feel to subscribe. I hope this video helped inspire some self change to anticipate what is to come in DPT school and how much work you're going to have to do. But also to be excited about how to objectively measure muscle strength. Change people, change people. That's why we live for change people. Have a great one, you guys.